which is all deadly for our body in some ways because they contribute to the glycation, which damages the glycocalyx. I've been studying the glycocalyx lately and I didn't even know what the glycocalyx and I thought I understand glycation and glycosylation and I've been reading so much about endothelial glycocalyx, all right? The endothelium is the covering of our inside and outside skin, but then also our vessels and our tubular structures uh, peritoneal structures, so our GI structures, our lymphatics, our uh, arteries and veins and capillaries, uh, the heart, uh, all of these flowing epithelial layers contain something called a glycocalyx. Glycosaminoglycans are glucose or glycan sugar uh, bound particles that line every cellular structure pretty much and if you just take the cell structure of an artery a vein or a capillary there's these glycated glycosylated i should say finger-like projections that line the vessels that create this very mucinous environment which allows almost like a teflon and a skipping to allows the red blood cells, bad blood cells, and the platelets and all other microscopic uh, entities going through the blood vessels for one to flow evenly over this glycocalyx. The glycosaminoglycans are bound to these proteinaceous particles that are either at the top, in the middle, uh, inside, or bound through the cell wall of these epithelial cells, which are lipids. Remember, we're made of fat, by the way. And these glycosaminoglycans are also sulfated with negative charge. So this negative charge lines the sugar particles that are everywhere. In my opinion, glucose is necessary for glycosylation. And glycosylation is the normal binding of sugar particles, whether it's glucose or other uh, glycogen-like or, uh, or sugar particles that are made in our body, by the way, which then bind and create this mucinous uh, substance that allows things to flow freely with some measure of cilia-like, but there's also there's also hyaluronidase, there's also uh, uh, heparin sulfate that are necessary to prevent the blood from clotting. Just take a blood vessel. Because we bring our glucose levels into the glycation range, which is a higher sugar level, my bet is the glycosylation range is the 40 to 60 and glycation is probably 80 and above. Uh, for sure and and so what happens uh, so what happens in the glycation range the glucose ex excessively binds to these these proteinaceous glycoprotein particles which then damages them reduces and removes the negative charge so now you have these negatively charged particles including white cells that are freely moving down the vessels but when they come to this area that is damaged, they bind to it. They begin to release the cytokines, a call for help, the mast cells, which create more blood vessels that come in to bring in more help of the cytokines, TNF-alpha. Uh, you're bringing in other uh, NK cells and other lymphocytes which are necessary to help the, the platelets bind, red cells bind, you begin to build a clot, you have fat cells that bind in there that then are partially there because remember, these cell walls are made of fat, you begin to create healing process. 
but because we live in the glycation range, we're constantly damaging this. And so whether this is in a vessel, it's in the bowels, it's in a, in, in a, uh, a tubular structure within an endocrine gland or an exocrine gland, All of this is damaging. It's a reproductive organ. All of this is getting damaged by the simple concept that this glycosaminoglycan, uh, the glyco calyx layer is being damaged everywhere in our body, including the renal system. And I'm reading a paper uh, endothelial glycocalyx, not just a sugar coat. Well, we're being, we are sugar coated, which is critical. So the, the function of glucose is not energy, but it's the binding to structures, whether you're binding to a hormone in order to make it active or inactive purposefully, or to a receptor, uh, or to a cellular structure which you're causing the natural and normal function to happen. Uh, this was from the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine, uh, volume 164, number four, August 15, 2016. Now, this is all really relevant to today because we live in a high metabolic disordered environment Metabolic syndrome basically is a high glycation environment. We're all living in it, right? Three to six meals a day. You're eating mostly fruits, vegetables, lean meat, right? Fiber, which is all deadly for our body in some ways because they contribute to the glycation which damages the glycocalyx, which changes the sulfated bonding and charge to the glycocalyx that removes the mucinous, slippery, Teflon-like substance that's covering every nook and cranny of our body, right? It's quite simple and amazing, my friends. And it's everywhere. This is critical. And then there's cholesterol, so sunlight, it causes the development of cholesterol sulfate. And you need the cholesterol sulfate in order to create the negatively charged glycocalyx in order to keep the natural electromolecular forces doing what they're meant to do. Why are we getting all these diseases and challenges? Well, because we don't understand the glycocalyx and uh, if you just start uh, Googling the glycocalyx and look at the video for glycocheck, which is a little scope that goes under the tongue and looks at the vessels, and what you can do, what you see is the distance between the basement membrane or the cell and the, the mucinous uh, lining, the red blood cells are all flowing through the blood, but when this, this, layer is disrupted, it becomes very thin, and now you're exposing the cell to the trauma that happens because our glycocalyx is damaged. All right, so dots and ideas, just look up glycocalyx. We'll put some links on, uh, on our YouTube channel for you guys to look at more and more. Uh, this is Dr. Robert Kiltz, MD, live and strong for you, teaching you better health and wellness ideas. Oh, check out uh, Elliot Overton, on oxalates and phytates and more on your health and wellness. God bless you, my friends. Have an awesome and amazing day.